know, in, in, in journalism, we talk about um, uh, don't shoot the messenger. But I think when it comes to you, we should be talking about don't shoot the lawyer. Um, I, I look at the stuff that you've gone through and reading through that stuff. Uh, one, you think that you are a, a common criminal. Um, you have um, been imprisoned. You've been assaulted. Uh, you've been threatened by the police. You have uh, spent uh, over eight days. In 2018, you spent eight days uh, uh, in, in, in prison, charged for defeating and or obstructing the course of, uh, of, of justice. Um, that's pretty daunting. Da do you ever feel tempted to give up? Uh, I, I haven't so far felt tempted to give up. I mean, my attitude is that if this is what they are doing to me, it means I must be doing something right and someone wants to stop me. And also, I think I'm over 60 and I've spent most of my life doing this work. It would be like a complete waste of the past 25, 30 years of my life uh, to then give up. Mm. You know, because so what would I have been fighting for? Mm. I've, I've never really thought that I would give up. Yes, when the new dispensation came in, I thought we, we human rights lawyers would sit back, relax, and I would be able to do commercial work and earn good money like other lawyers, but it hasn't happened. So I, I, I have not thought of giving up, mm. no. You know, so you've been disappointed by the new dispensation when it comes to the issue of human rights? Yes, I have, actually. Mm. I have. I mean, we have a brand new constitution, and we are told that it needs to be realigned, and the realignment is taking forever, and I can tell you here now, 2023 will be here, and there will be no realignment. Why? Why is this process taking such a long time? One would have thought that it's an easy thing There to do. is no political will to realign. Nobody is going to legislate themselves out of power. That is the bottom line. So for as long as parliament remains partisan and nobody is pushing the realignment agenda, uh, 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 those laws are not going to be realigned. But the opposition so, is in there in Parliament. One would have thought they would be doing a song and dance ar around the realignment. But it's not happening. That's the bottom line. Yes, their numbers right now are not great, but still we are not hearing much about realignment. And uh, I mean, realignment is something that the president ought to have done when he was vice president and he had the, the portfolio of Minister mm -hmm. of Justice. Mm -hmm because most of those laws were fall under the justice portfolio. So why was that not done soon after 2013? And also for the judiciary. Do we really need to realign the laws to give people rights that the Constitution gives them? Surely if the Constitution says, I have uh, certain rights, and I go to the Constitutional Court, nobody should be telling me about realigning. Mm. The court should determine whether or not that right has been violated and then give a time frame and say to the, 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 the legislature and the executive, we are giving you six months within which to do X, Y, Z to put this in place. Why are the courts not That's doing not that? That's not because everybody really is singing from the same hymn sheet. Wow. You know, if, if the executive is not uh, doing much to, to, to make sure that certain uh, laws are taken to parliament and parliament is not demanding realignment, uh, do you think the judiciary is going to take a different position? Again, one, mm. one is tempted to ask, mm. where are the citizens when it comes to this? These are critical issues. These are critical issues, but when citizens think of the abductions, the beatings, the whatever might happen, the arrests. I mean, you see lots of people being arrested, but they never actually get prosecuted. Mm. You know, your pastor Evans, uh, uh, they get arrested mm. because they've raised their head. So the intimidation... So, the fear mm. of what might happen to you. And all of us are like, you know, if I'm okay in my little corner and I can hustle for bread and diesel for the generator for my kids, 
why do I want to rock the boat? But actually, if we all took the position that these are rights that were given to us all as citizens, and we must uh, really stand up and, and, and seek to enforce them, I think things would be different. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with the doctors, the way they have been absolutely united. You know, from the lowest doctor to the topmost uh, 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 specialist, it's, uh, it's, it's been fantastic to, 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 to see how united they've been. And that's how we all should be, really, in our respective uh, uh, professions. Uh, when someone does what they have to do, if the law comes uh, down hard on them, we should all be there to say, you will not do this to someone who's fighting for all of us. We, we ought to stand up and fight for what we believe in. Yes. Democracy is about fighting for your rights. For That's your what rights, you're yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it's mine and your relatives who, who, who are being subjected to poor health care. It's them who can't access any medical help in our local hospitals. Mm -hmm. And the doctors are saying, give us the tools with which to heal people. Mm -hmm. Is that something that shouldn't be asked? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be encouraging if the public supported that kind of move? Because it's the public who are, who are the, the beneficiaries of this, of this absolutely, whole thing. But absolutely. But we're not, we're not seeing any of that happening. The doctors are not asking for the health delivery system to be improved just for themselves. It's for the populace. Mm. And if the public were to say we are behind the doctors, we are the consumers of, of, of the medical services in these uh, public institutions, we will match with the doctors, but actually we are not doing that. Mm. And those who are doing what they're doing to the doctors, when they need medical attention, they jump on a plane and go elsewhere. So they really don't care what's happening at Pararenyatwa. I mean, you are having people at Pararenya for being referred to a mission hospital in, 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 in Mount Darwin. When, in the early 80s, we were getting people from Malawi, from Zambia, coming for medical attention at Pararenya mm. because it was the best uh, uh, health institution in, 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 in this part of the world. Um, what's your view on uh, the, the, the talk about political reforms, uh, what's your assessment of where we are right now? Well, it will depend really on who's driving the political reforms and what they are meant to achieve. Mm -hmm. Are they meant to achieve a GNU where everyone is uh, accommodated and then they all eat together and uh, until the next election, you know, they are all happy eating together uh, without actually looking at how it affects the ordinary person? Well, yeah, uh, then it's pointless having those political reforms. Mm. Political reforms require political will, and it requires all of us, not political actors alone. We know political actors have an agenda, and their agenda is power retention. Uh, so if those... Power uh, grabbing and power retention. And power retention. Mm. So if those who are not in politics are excluded, uh, we will we'll have uh, a deal that will suit the politicians but will not necessarily suit you and me and the rest of uh, the people who are not in politics. Mm. You, as a lawyer who has uh, worked quite a lot, um, around issues of uh, freedom of expression, uh, media freedom, and freedom of, so of association. What's your view on the successor bills for uh, POSA and, and, uh, and AIPA? Are you satisfied? Not really. No, I am not. Because to, you find that what they take out on, from one, they put in another one. Uh, we, we, and also we have a judiciary that does not interpret rights in an expansive manner. They, 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 there's a very myopic way of looking at what rights are, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, surely once the Constitution says you have a right, there ought not to be restrictions to the enjoyment uh, of uh, that right. Because uh, once you give that little window of an exception, and you have a judiciary that is not very keen on expanding on rights, uh, then we're doomed. 
we'll just have the very same thing happening, but uh, under a different name. Mm. The um, it sounds very depressing. Do you are you hopeful at all about us getting out of where we are right now? Uh, uh, I'm an eternal optimist. <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe that everything has a time and a day. I believe that if apartheid South Africa could fall spectacularly the way it did, uh, we, everything else is possible. You know, if uh, 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 the Soviet Union fell spectacularly with its wall the way it did, uh, it, it can happen anyway. So yes, I am very, very hopeful that we will see some change, uh, certainly during my lifetime. Oh, that's, that's mm -hmm. good to hear. In your view, what will it take to have a strong human rights culture in Zimbabwe? What will it take? What are, what, what are the key issues, one or two key issues, that would address all the things that you've just outlined now? Uh, you know, I think if we all resolved to do whatever we do, infused with human rights, it, it might help. My, my background was in prosecution. And when I was a prosecutor, my, my, my motto was to prosecute with integrity, infuse human rights into my prosecution, understand that an accused person has the same rights as the witness. And uh, if you practice company law, whatever you do, what, if you are a brewer, whatever your job is, if you do it from the perspective that that must be done in a way that respects the rights of everyone else, say, that would help. How to achieve that, of course, is, 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 a, is a different story mm. altogether. Because firstly, this capture thing has completely killed all of us. Mm. You know, I mean, people that I worked with who were human rights defenders, who were who I thought, you know. The minute that they get certain positions, you, you ask yourself, are these the same guys? You know, it's all now about what's in it. For me. For me. Not what's in it for, for all, all of, of us. us. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's, that's the biggest problem. So we should all try very, very hard to, to, to really, you know, spread the word of doing whatever we do with mm. integrity. Well, when do, when do you think the, the, the burden of uh, ensuring that we have a human rights culture lies? Is it the citizens knowing their rights and fighting for their rights? Is it the state respecting the rights of the, citiz of the citizens? Well, what, 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 where do you think the burden lies? I think it's a mixture of both. I mean, we have oversight uh, institutions like, for instance, the Human Rights Commission. It really ought to be able to, 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 to teach citizens of their rights. We also ought to expand on advocacy. Civil society, I think, were also to blame, but there are so many restrictions as well. Uh, for instance, you find that uh, you know, political rights, you know, under the Electoral Act, uh, you, they can, certain things can only be done by certain names. Uh, but why can't I be free to go anyway and, and preach to people what rights they have under the electoral act? Mm. How free they are to do uh, uh, what the law allows them to do. Why should there be restrictions? Mm. So firstly, we must fight to remove restrictions on who can do advocacy work. Uh, the Treasury must fully capacitate our oversight institutions. We have a gender commission. What does it do? I have no clue. But I know that it has no money. We have a Human Rights Commission. It's been doing fantastic work uh, to a point where the government has even uh, uh, complained about some of its reports. But it is completely underfunded. It cannot carry out its mandate of really uh, uh, you know, telling the people about rights and what their rights are. You know, we have the National Peace and Reconciliation uh, Commission, but what has it done to, to ensure that atrocities of the past are dealt with and are never repeated? And that there's some form of reparation and that those who are victims are fully heard in public and are able to really 
get over this period because it has been acknowledged that wrong things were done. So everybody has a role to play, but our Chapter 4 institutions particularly should play a greater role than they are doing. I know that they are not properly funded, but they, they probably should do a little more to fundraise. And I also think you guys in corporates, uh, uh, you, you, you should do a little more okay. in, in, in capacitating uh, 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 civil society groupings that try to teach rights. Uh, you would be very, very surprised that it, in most of the organizations that uh, uh, deal with rights, uh, we, we never ever get support from corporates uh, because of the environment. If you support lawyers uh, who do work for human rights, if you support doctors who do work uh, that's rights uh, related, or your license might be revoked. So I think corporates also, under their banner, you know, your ZNCC or whatever, CZI, CZI uh, you should do more to promote That's an important point. human rights. Mm. And uh, the world over, corporate social responsibility is no longer limited to drilling a borehole or two. Mm. Or, giving, or supporting a school. Or, or supporting a school. Mm. It goes beyond that. Do you, do you think educating, uh, making sure that our schools and our universities teach human rights, would that help? Are we aware of our rights? Do we need to be taught our rights at an early age, at, 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 at high school and at university? Would that help? I think it would because, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of us suffer from the deficit of not knowing what is possible and what's not possible. Or where you know you don't know where to go. Uh, where you do know where to go, the systems are such that you cannot actually get the relief that you require. Because yes, you go to the Human Rights Commission and you report and they do everything they're supposed to do. But actually, they don't have the capacity to go and say this right has been violated. You know, So we all need to work together, starting from the advocacy part, teaching everyone to know their rights. Knowing your right does not mean you are asserting it. Mm. Encouraging people to assert those rights at a practical level and also making sure that our systems that are, are supposed to provide the oversight on rights work properly. Judicial capture should simply not be there mm. because then it means we're not going to enjoy our rights. Mm. If, if I can know the right, I can assert it. But if at the end of the day there's no one to say, yes, you are entitled this r to this right, and I order that this and this be done so that you enjoy it, it's all pointless. So it should be really everybody. The knowing of human rights should not be limited to schools or to, to, to universities. It should go even up to the, the judicial officers themselves because there's this thinking that if I work for government, Human rights has nothing to do with me, which is, which is you know, completely not the point. Mm. If you work for the government, you have an even greater duty to ensure that, uh, you know, the rights of people in that atmosphere uh, uh, are respected. Mm. Wow. So you and um, uh, Tawanda Nyambirai uh, broke away from... Kantan Imamen and set yourself up in 2006. That that must have been an interesting part of your of your career, um, owning your own practice. Uh, tell us about that journey and the experiences you got from that. Right. Uh, well, I was looking for something that would give me the freedom to do my work without really worrying too much about whether I've met a target or not. You know, law firms uh, work on targets. Money is more important than uh, 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 enjoyment of rights. So Tawanda and I go a long way. I knew him when he was a, a student at a, a UZ, and he came in looking for someone who could represent his uh, brother uh, uh, who had been kicked out of a college. And he, of course, he had no money, and his brother had no money. So I took on the case, and I did it for him, and that's when our friendship started. He was still at law school. 
so when I said to him, I, I, I'd really like to set up, uh, and I don't like the idea of being a one-woman show, and he said, no, 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 we can start together. And uh, it's been a very interesting journey. Tawanda is more a businessman. He does some, some of the big corporate cases, but he's really more interested in his uh, businesses. And um, it's uh, been interesting, and uh, I've enjoyed every mm. minute of How it. How was the challenge of funding it? Um, uh, there's lessons to those that are thinking of uh, setting up their own uh, law firms and partnerships. Uh, setting up a law firm is really not that expensive uh, uh, unless you want to start up at the upper end. I mean, I had second hand everything. I, I didn't mind. I, I had a dilapidated old car. I don't have the pressure that you men have of driving fancy cars. So <laughs> I, 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 I was able to buy a second hand library from a, 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 a colleague who was uh, living for Botswana. So it was uh, not bad. And Tawanda, of course, had the money. And interestingly, it was uh, interesting that quite a number of my clients were like, I remember one client who said, oh, I'll buy you all your computers, which was quite interesting. Because, I mean, this was just a client. Uh, people were very supportive. Mm. And uh, I didn't feel the strain of starting up. I didn't borrow from anyone. And Tawanda provided the, 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 the you know, premises we could, uh, uh, he could sublet to us. So it was a, it was a great journey. And it was great. And uh, uh, I have a, a crop of very, very dedicated young lawyers. Uh, uh, you know, one of whom is very, very keen on human rights. So, and the reason he came to Mtetwa and Nyambirai was because he said, I want to do human rights and I, I want to make a, diff uh, a difference. Uh, Doug Colton? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's encouraging when you have young people being passionate. And also it means that I can relax a little bit because I can't run as fast as I used to. And... It means I can, you know, hand over the pattern to the younger generation. Mm. You, you, you've done, uh, you did five years in Zimbabwe as a prosecutor, two mm -hmm. years in Swaziland as a prosecutor. What role did that play in who you are right now? Um, my years in prosecution, especially in Zimbabwe, I wouldn't trade for anything. Wow. Firstly, it, it, I, I never intended to leave prosecution. I wanted to be a career prosecutor, prosecutor uh, in the hope that I could infuse, you know, mm. treating everybody with respect, regardless of their circumstances. Uh, and uh, it didn't quite work uh, that way. Uh, but the lessons I learned from my prosecution is that whatever you do, do with integrity. No half measures. I mean, uh, my colleagues used to be surprised that I'll go uh, to the office on a Sunday when I was a prosecutor. I was like, why are you doing that? But you don't want to go to court. And, and, and court work is public work and, and, and look stupid because you are not prepared. And uh, the complainants, the people who expect justice from you, expect you to be prepared. So the lessons that came from there is that whatever you're doing, do it to the best of your ability. Prepare, prepare, and prepare. No half measures, you know. Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing as terrible as when a guilty person gets off because the prosecution has been badly done. Mm. And uh, equally, there's nothing worse than having an innocent man convicted. You know. What's when you look back now at the crop of the prosecutors that we have and the prosecutorial profession, what, what does it give you satisfaction? Are you happy? Are these part of the captured people? Or? Well, I'm a, I was just reading this morning on one of the lawyers' group about the prosecutor was openly soliciting for a bribe. I mean, all the years I was in prosecution, I, I never heard of anyone 
you know, offering bribes to prosecutors. Certainly, I never received any offers of a bribe. And it just was completely unheard of. And if it came to the fore, one would have been prosecuted for that, you know. Uh, I think we just take everything for granted. And, and, and uh, you know, you can see why standards uh, 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 are where they are. I mean, you have a fully fledged interview to get a prosecutor general. You get the top three completely not considered. You get number six appointed. Do you seriously think that you are going to have the best prosecutorial body led by a person who did not impress at the interviews? No, you are not. And is that an act of corruption on its own? Is it going to be strong on corruption? Because if he's there, not through due process, but corruptly, because what other criteria was used to appoint him? Other than that, he was seen as someone that you know, the executive can work with. So why, why, why do you think that the prosecution as a body will live up to the ideals that the Constitution says it must be independent, full of integrity, impartial? It's not going to be like that. So we need right people in some of these institutions. But, but clearly, from what you're saying, that we don't have that even within the prosecutorial arm of uh, the judiciary system. And uh, as, as I'm listening to you, I know you're saying you are, you are, you are an optimist. I can't help get a bit uh, <laughs> uh, you know, um, deflated by the fact that it does appear that uh, the majority of us are captured. The prosecutors but are captured, the judges are, are captured, we are afraid to fight for our rights. What hope do we have as a people? We are learning from all of these things. We are seeing what happens when we get captured. Surely from these lessons we must know that the best men and women for positions must be appointed. And I believe that we will have the political will to say Trevor Ngube is the best person to run this organization and he must be appointed. The fact that we may not like his politics or his tribe or whatever other ism should be completely irrelevant. Are you the best man or woman for the job? Uh, if you are, you should be appointed. So you're still hopeful? I am, yeah. Um, the, 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 let me ask you this. When are you writing a book? Because what, what it's what you're telling me right now could make an amazing book. Your life story <laughs> is an amazing book. It's a book I would love to read. It's a book a lot of people would love to read. It's a book that will have lots of lessons and inspirations for a lot of people. When are you writing this book? Uh, I don't know that there would be that many people to <laughs> read that book, but uh, who knows, uh, when I retire, maybe I might. Mm. I don't know. Mm. There's, a book, there's yeah. a book in all of us. There's a book in you. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will when I retire. All right. Mm -hmm. the, 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 there's an issue of um, Zimbabwean law students. We've studied at Rhodes, uh, studied at Vito, from, from outside the country, who are required to sit for tests. And they sit for a year doing nothing, studying for these tests to convert. Is, is that the right thing to do? Why are we doing that? If uh, they've passed at roads with flying colors and we want them to come and sit, pay fees to convert and that kind of stuff, what's your view on that? It makes a mockery of the political uh, 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 slogans that we are integrating in the region, we're opening borders, we have Comesa, we're doing this, we're doing that, because here we are. You know, we don't trust our colleagues across the border. We want our kids to write exams again here. But again, of course, the argument is that there has to be reciprocity. But we're punishing our own kids. Yes. There has to be re reciprocity in that, uh, you know, if the South Africans will not admit us without writing exams, uh, those qualified, they must do the same here. 
for me, it simply just does not make sense mm -hmm. because generally the law in the region is the same. And once you've been to law school, you know where to find which piece of legislation. And uh, you should see the cost of, of writing these exams. The young lawyers were just protesting about that just now because the fees is ju have just gone through the roof. It's $1,000 per subject. Per subject for kids who are not earning even $500 per month. For now, parents who have paid four years for these kids to for graduate? For these kids, yeah. Now, where on earth do you expect these children to get this mm -hmm. money from in an economy like this? But why is the Law Society and not changing that? Uh, there is argument uh, for, for changing it, but uh, whether it will happen or not, uh, I, I don't know. Because even for me, the fact that the fees are what they are is, is, is absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, a scandal. Because a lot of kids will be forced to write a subject per sitting mm -hmm. because it's taken them that long to raise the thousand dollars and of course with the economy that thousand dollars will keep uh, uh, escalating. escalating but it just makes a mockery of all this pretense that we have a sadak region that's pulling you know together we will be sharing uh, uh, resources whether human or otherwise and uh, we, we we can cross borders and do business uh, with each other uh, that's, that's just a mirage. We, it, it's not happening. It's political sloganeering. Um, what book are you reading at the moment? Or rather, let me start by saying, is there a book that you've read that has been life-changing in your, in your life? I wouldn't really say so. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say so, no. no. What no, book are you reading no. now? I'm reading Stuart Doran's Kingdom, Power, Glory. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how is it? <laughs> it's a... It's saying to me, everything that's going on now went on 30-something years ago. And that basically nothing has changed. And, and Stuart Doran's book is really historical. It's not fiction. It's historical. And uh, I think we need to look at how we can change this cycle. Because it's a cycle that simply has not Repeating been broken. Itself, yeah. It has not been broken. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened to Joshua Nkomo happened to Morgan Swangirai. And uh, it, it just continues happening. Mm -hmm. And when are we going to stop that? When are we going to stop that? Yeah. Let me ask you, mm -hmm. when do you think we're going to stop that? Well, it's up to you guys who have the power to do so, <laughs> to do it. You know, there has to be the political will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you advise a student considering studying law to take up, to take up uh, human rights law? Well, of course, I mean, uh, because I'm passionate about rights, mm -hmm. I probably would do so. But my view is that uh, every branch of the law needs people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say to every student who, who studied law, whatever passion you follow, Infuse it with human rights. Do it properly. Do it with integrity. Uh, look at the impact it will have on the next person. And uh, I mean, my view is that virtually all of us are, are, are human rights uh, activists one way or another. It's just that sometimes we don't realize that uh, uh, some of our interventions are based on rights. But if we all consciously say, as a publisher, I will infuse all my publications with human rights. I'll do everything with integrity. Uh, I think we'd all be a better people. We should have the diversity of different people doing different things, but it is how we do them that really should make us one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This kind of job must take a toll on you, the family. Um, how have you been able to cope? I actually don't think it's as stressful as, uh, as, as people think. You do get a case that will stress you a little bit, but generally there's a whole lot of fun side to human rights. I mean, you, you, you can't believe some of the fun things that we get to do, uh, how we, 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 we play with the police, you know, how we've been able to pull a fast one on this one or that one. I mean, the strategy that goes into it is a lot of fun. 
you know, for instance, I told you how we managed to get a magistrate to be forced to recuse himself because we strategized and uh, were able to, to, to be one upon him and he never saw it coming. So, I mean, there's a lot of fun side to it. Plus also, I think all those in my social circles know that I'm a party animal. So where there's a party, <laughs> I'll dance up a storm. So that's, I do relax quite a bit. That, that yeah. takes us to the next thing. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you relax? I just like chilling with friends and having fun. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I, I know you love dancing. Absolutely, yeah. It's yeah. my one exercise that I can do over and over again, yeah. The, we asked uh, people on Twitter to uh, ask uh, questions. Uh -huh. And one question that has kept coming is, uh, would you consider being a judge? Yeah, it's a great uh, a, a, a job to be a judge, but I think we all should accept certain things that we are not suited for. I don't have the demeanor of a judge. I wouldn't be able to behave the way a judge should behave. I would not have the patience that judges are required to have when you have to sit in court and listen to a whole lot of crap that lawyers will be submitting before you. I'm just not judge material. And I've accepted that, and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I also think where I am, I have the, 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 the you know, freedom to choose what I want to do. Mm -hmm. If I become a judge, I'll just be allocated a file uh, on, on issues that I, have, I might have no interest in, other than that justice must be done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it would be great to, to be a judge, but uh, no, thank you. I'm not judge material. I would make a very bad judge. That's uh, a resounding no, no. I would interfere in <laughs> proceedings. I just would be a cantankerous mm -hmm. judge. Beatrice, it's yeah. been amazing yeah. chatting to mm -hmm. you. Uh, yeah. Your story is an inspirational story, um, a story of uh, fighting for the underdogs, a story of uh, defending uh, human rights, and you've been celebrated, and I think you deserve to be celebrated. So. Thank you so much. We didn't take for granted your coming on to in conversation with Thank Trevor. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for watching. Don't want to miss out on these insightful conversations. Subscribe to our YouTube channel.